I thank the member for Riverina. The member for Dawson. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker. I'd like to associate myself with the comments of the Prime Minister, the Opposition Leader, particularly the members for Melbourne Ports and uh, Kuyong and the member for Riverina and other members who have spoken so eloquently here this morning and yesterday on the condolence motion for Sir Zelman Cohen. Like them, I too am in awe of Sir Zelman and the life that he lived. Uh, as the member for Kuyong said, Sir Zelman was a true giant of a man, a giant of a man in Australian history with a history of achievement spanning the best part of a century. His lists of achieve achievements, others have detailed, but uh, he was a leader in every field of endeavour to which he turned his hand. He was co-dux at Scotch College in Melbourne, a Rhodes Scholar, a dux at Oxford's postgraduate law school. He was internationally renowned as a legal academic and vice-chancellor. He, he was the chairman of Fairfax and the chairman of the British Press Council. He was made a Knight Grand Cross of the Royal Victorian Order by Queen Elizabeth II. He was an avid St Kilda football club supporter and the leader of the Australian Jewish community. He was a loving and devoted family man. He married Lady Anna, then Anna Whitner, ser after serving in the Second World War, both in Darwin when it was bombed in 1942, and also as a sub-lieutenant, a sub-lieutenant, I should say, on the staff of the US General Douglas MacArthur. Sir Zelman Cohen was born on October 7th, 1919, and passed away, as we know, on December the 8th, 2011, at the good age of 92. But his life spanned more than the best part of the 20th century. So Zelman Cowan bridged a gap in Australian government at a time when it was most needed to be bridged. His predecessor, Sir John Kerr, had changed the political landscape forever in this country with the dismissal of the Whitlam government. And a rift, I've got to acknowledge, had developed as the role of Governor General did come under increasing scrutiny at the time. But in bridging the gap, Sir Zelman Cowan was credited with healing the nation. And in doing so, he brought the role of Governor General close to the Australian people. So much so that the nation mourns his loss, like a family mourns the loss of someone dear. And uh, noting Sir Zelman's Jewish background, I know that in Hebrew, the word uh, Shiva literally translated to seven, but it's also known as an emotional and spiritual bridge that does heal the grief of family members in times of loss. Uh, Shiva is seen as the bridge that helps them cross the void that's left in their life. And traditionally, given that Shiva means seven, it's a seven day mourning period in Judaism. But a week seems a little inadequate, given the magnitude of Sir Zalman's impact on our lives, our government, our people and our nation. But we as a nation join Lady Anna and the family of Sir Zalman in mourning their loss but also in celebrating a full life, fully lived. And if I may end, Madam Deputy Speaker, uh, by borrowing from a well-known Jewish prayer, the El Malay Rakakim Rukamin, fully compassionate God on high, to Sir Zalman Cowan, who has entered eternity, grant clear and certain rest with you in the lofty heights of the sacred and pure, whose brightness shines like the very glow of heaven. Source of mercy forever enfold Zelman in the embrace of your wings, secure his soul in eternity. Adonai, he is yours. He will rest in peace. Amen.